Hi, my name is Ben from Wooby Design and today I'm going to show you how I installed these Arctic Turn Overland windows. And just to let you know, I have zero affiliation with Turn Overland and I bought these windows with my own money. And let me just show you a couple things that I really like about these windows over other glass windows for Sprinter vans. First, they're double pane acrylic windows which makes them 60% lighter and 5 times more thermally efficient than glass. They're also 17 times more impact resistant than glass and do not shatter. Secondly, one of the biggest reasons why I went with these windows is that every turn overland windows come with this built in shade with blackout screen and bug screen which makes it really easy to black out the whole van to provide privacy in a matter of seconds. There's no need to carry around extra blackout shades and all you have to do is pull down or pull up to have privacy. The 300mm size windows will only have two different stops for opening and all the other sizes will have three different stops for opening. Real quick, let me just show you what's included with each of these Arctic Turn Overland windows. First, you have the blind and screen assembly which has the blackout screen and the bug screen built in. Secondly, the inner trim ring which is temporarily attached to the windows. They provided two different sets of screws and I ended up using the shoulder screws for my install. And lastly, the window itself. Now, these windows need some type of inner frame and just the thickness of the sheet metal will not be enough for a proper install. And they recommend making the frame using hardwoods or other dense materials like aluminum or other soft metal. It is not recommended to use softwoods like construction grade 2x4s or plywoods and the reason being is that since these windows work by compressing the inner and the outer ring together, materials like softwoods or plywoods will compress and shrink over time which will create gaps between the rings. So it's important to make the inner frame using dense materials. And I called and asked about using Baltic birch plywood, you know the good stuff, and they said it will be completely fine. So I'm using 1 inch thick Baltic birch plywood and use my CNC machine to cut out the inner frame. And they have the exact dimensions on their website for each windows so I created the file accordingly. And depending on the thickness of the frame there are different size inner frame rings available on their website so make sure you're purchasing the right thickness. Ok so let's get started. Once I have the frames cut out I need to cut these metal support pieces off. I'm using the inner frame as a template and marking where I need to cut out. And I decided to leave the extra support pieces for the smaller windows since I think it will help support these windows. Now since I'm using an angle grinder and there's only about a quarter inch space between the sheet metal and the support pieces, I was kind of scared to cut into the sheet metal. So for the first few cuts I added some strips of wood behind so I don't accidentally cut into the sheet metal. And after a few cuts I got used to the angle grinder and got better at controlling the tool and gave more confidence to do it without any wood strips behind. And for the bigger windows I decided to cut off all the support pieces since the windows are so big and there wasn't much room for the support pieces to add any structural support. Once I have all the support pieces cut out, I align the frame to mark where I'll be cutting out the windows. According to Turn Overland's consideration for fitment, I need to leave about 3 inches on both sides and 1.5 and inches from the top and the bottom. So I align the frame accordingly and double check the placement for each window. The smaller rear windows are placed as high and forward as possible so the windows will be above the fixed bed. And the driver's side window will be for the main workspace slash living room so I check to make sure it's in the right position. And the sliding door window is placed right on center and as high as possible. Now once you have it marked on the inside of the van, you need to transfer these lines to the outside of the van. So what I did was just marking two different lines on the inner frame and transferring that line to the inside of the van and drilling the holes. From the outside, I can insert the drill bits into the two holes and align the frame according to the lines that I marked from the inside. I can adjust the level of the frame accordingly and mark the lines that I need to cut out. Once I have the lines marked, I taped up the outside of the line so I don't get any scratches on the paint. And if you're curious on what happens if you don't put tape down, this is what happens. 
Now I'm sure I can buff this out, but still, this could have been prevented if I just remembered to put tape down. Now when I'm drilling the pilot holes for the jigsaw blades, I like to use this trick where I'm using a cup and a drill bit extender and it catches all the shavings when I'm drilling the holes from the inside of the van. And then I could put the trash back from the inside of the van to catch all the jigsaw shavings and you really do make a lot of mess with the jigsaw. Now I'm cutting this out with the jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. Just make sure to go slow and it will be fairly easy to go around the corners. If it's too tight of a turn, just back the jigsaw up a little bit and readjust. Since the sheet metal starts getting more flimsy the more you cut, I'm using a strong magnet to support the sheet metal which helps a lot. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And another thing that I noticed while cutting with the jigsaw is how much mess it creates. These chips are flying all over the place from all different angles. And even when I had the safety goggle on and the face mask and I have very small eyes, I still managed to get the shaving in my eyes so if you have access to a face shield, I would highly recommend it for this process. Once I finished cutting it out, I filed the edges nice and smooth and I checked to see if the windows will fit. I then apply Rust-Oleum to protect the raw metal edges and let that dry for a few minutes and take the tape off. Next, I need to glue the inner frame against the inside of the van. Now, for the rear windows, I use Secaflex 252 and for the bigger windows, I use 3M 5200 only because I ran out of the Secaflex 252. And I clamped them down for about half an hour for both adhesives. And I noticed that the Secaflex 252 hardens a lot quicker than the 3M 5200. And 3M 5200 is still good adhesive for this, but you just need to clamp it down for a few hours. So I would recommend the Sikaflex 252 for this application for quicker installation. Once the inner frame is in place and secured by the adhesives, I can take off the clamps and insert the window from the outside. My wife happened to visit me one day and helped me hold the window in place while I could secure it with the inner trim ring. Can I let go? No, don't let go. And I'm just finger tightening these screws for now so that I could hold the window in place. Okay. Donner's gonna peel the sticker off. How do you open this? Oh, babe, 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 babe. You gotta click this. Don't just... Whoa, hello. You're supposed to teach me. Jesus. Easy. I don't understand. Just once. Yeah, there you go. When you hear the click, and then that's it. Yeah. One, oh, one time? Two, no, two times. I always leave it on. They say uh, if you leave it on, it gets baked in the sun. It's super hard to take off. Right. That's half closed. What do you mean? So, if you want to crack a little bit of window, and yeah. you can feel the air coming in, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, that's the halfway and then if you want to go close all the way you gotta go all the way. It's too much. Gotcha, gotcha. So once you uh I got it. When you open it. I got it. Just once, twice, and then Babe, I got time. it. I would film it. Come here. I would not be a good helper. It is hot. And for the rest of the windows, I was able to use my Wobi camera jig to hold the window in place while I could secure it with the inner trim ring from the inside. And you can see the threaded holes for these screws right here. And for now, I'm just finger tightening these screws and I'll show you the most important part of this installation.
Now, the most important part of this window installation is compressing the window and the inner trim ring together to create a watertight seal. Turn Overland recommends 50 to 75% compression for the rubber gaskets. So I measured the gap between the window and the sheet metal and it was roughly about an eighth of an inch. So I would need to tighten these screws down to create a gap that's smaller than 1 16th inch of a gap. And there's no other additional sealants or adhesives needed. Now, before you tighten these screws, you need to apply metal-based anti-seize lubricant according to the instructions. So I applied it to each screw and tightened them down in a crisscross pattern. And it's important to use a screwdriver and hand tighten them. Do not use power tools for this step. Also, make sure you're using the right size screws. With my one inch thick Baltic birch plywood thick walls, I'm using the shorter screws that were provided. And once I finished tightening all these screws, I checked the compression and I was able to get 50 to 75% compression for all the windows. Woo! Heal it. Now, to install the built-in shades, I clip the top of the shade to the inner trim ring. Also, this shade is reversible so you can have the blackout screen roll out from the bottom or the top. I can then align the shade into position. I found that easier when I roll up the screen first and then pop the cover off to access the holes to secure the shade in place. I screwed in the four screws that were provided and I was finished. Okay, so this is how I installed these Arctic Turn Overland windows. As I mentioned earlier, I have no affiliation with Turn Overland. I just think this is the best window for camper vans on the market right now. It's double pane acrylic window that's five times thermally more efficient, 60% lighter than glass windows, has a built-in shade, super easy to install, and just overall better design than the rest of the windows on the market. And just a pro tip, these luxury vans that are being sold over $200,000 are also using these windows. Now, the most important part of this installation is compressing the window and the inner trim ring together to create a watertight seal. It's important to use hardwood or other dense materials like aluminum so it doesn't shrink. Make sure you're getting about 50 to 70% compression when you're tightening down these screws. And double check the thickness of your walls and order the proper windows. I also made sure to place these windows so it doesn't interfere with any of the doors. So have more than enough space between the rear windows and the rear doors when they're both open. The window on the sliding door can be open when I open or close the sliding door. The driver's side window is in the right position for my van layout which will work out as the main living room slash office window. And the biggest reason why I think these windows are the best is the built-in bug screen and the blackout screen. It's low profile and takes up little to no space and you're able to instantly pull these screens up and down. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you wanna know what was going through my head during this window installation, check out my highlights on my Instagram page. I saved the stories on my bio and you'll have a better idea on what was really happening inside my head during that time. And check out my website. I have these fresh new t-shirts available and plans and sometimes products, but honestly, I've been really focused on this van series, so probably not anytime soon. And if you want to support this channel, check out my Patreon page. I have different rewards available like boxes of scraps and other goodies. And lastly, like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video in this video series. And I have them in a playlist, so if you miss any, check out the playlist on my channel. Thanks again, and until next time. Woo!